Um, we come now to the phrase that also specifically raises my hackles, which is users are the weakest link. You know, and I, I find this annoying for two reasons. One uh, is that as past guests of the show have said time and time again, uh, thinking of your employees and users of your tech as weak links devalues them as professionals and people and also makes it harder for them to think for themselves as think of themselves as active participants in the security process. And the flip side, which I think is less press, is the idea that uh, absent the human factor with regards to things like social engineering, insider threat, or bad business practices, we'd all have these impenetrable forces and cybercrime would somehow shrivel away. So, you know, I'm, I'm guessing we can't machine learning our way into a perfectly sealed hermetic universe. So what's a better way to think about humans that, you know, aren't some annoying anomaly, uh, you know, that our perfect machines have to deal with, but our actual benefactors and the reason for all this technology? Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot here, obviously, to unpack, too. First of all, the statement itself is like one small step above users are stupid, yes. right? I yeah, mean, it's, completely. It's, it's one step above the stupid user story, which is awful. Mm -hmm. um, so to your first point, yeah, it's just it's devaluing the people. Here's a question for you, though. Aren't your information security people also users in your environment? Exactly, yeah. And, and how many that, of them that have built perfect, the tech as well, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. And how many of them have perfect track records on your, your phishing tests? Yeah. Probably right. none. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go into my diatribe on phishing tests today, but because okay. um, that's a whole other ball of wax. But no, I mean, the, the, again, the problem with it is it's very dismissive. It's, mm -hmm. you know, well, we got these users. They're always going to be the problem. It's the human element. There's nothing we can do. Um, yeah, I... Right, because we do a lot of things that don't address the user issue. Phishing tests are one of them. I mean, I actually have a, a different tweet thread out there. So I guess I am getting into the phishing thing now, okay. but <laughs> about how easy it is to bypass or to you know set up rules in Outlook to identify and you know quarantine, self-quarantine anything that's a phishing test. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's a perfect example of where you're actually encouraging the wrong behavior by your, your security awareness control in this case. Hmm. And so, you know, when we say users are the weakest link, we imply this immediate division between our user base and the security team, which mm -hmm. is exactly, again, the opposite of what we want. Yep. We want that to be the most collaborative, you know, very interactive relationship. So they're learning from us. And here's the kicker we're learning from them. Mm, how are you, you using the tools we put in your hands? Mm -hmm. And how you're using those tools impacts the things that we can do to secure them and to make it easier for you to keep yourself secure. You know, what are we doing to make it, you know, all right, could we block all inbound, all links that are in email? Sure, we could probably set up some kind of filter somewhere to strip out all the links, right? Mm -hmm. Is that reality though? How's that going to work? Okay, so how do we do this differently? How can we, you know, let's let's start with looking at the emails that our own systems send. Do they look like phishing? A lot of times they do. And <laughs> yeah. when you have those kinds of things in the environment, all right, how can we set up, how can we take your service now notifications, for instance, and change those so that it's clear they're not phishing attempts. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that we're not encouraging people, you know, otherwise you're just encouraging them to do the exact things you're trying to tell them not to do. Yes. Hey, yeah. you know, the here's this link. You got to click this link to go to your service now tickets. The only way you're going to get there or here, do this, click this link and it'll send an email to approve this ticket. Yeah. Well, Okay, unless you've got, but yeah, we don't give you anything other than a, a ticket ID to say any more about that. Like, how do we do that better? And you yeah. see that you see random survey monkey emails come in from <laughs> HR teams looking, for, you know, because yeah. they're they're doing some employee engagement survey or something. Like, mm -hmm. could we do a little better, please? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so that's where it's like we really need that collaboration because we should yes. be working with those teams to say. Let's talk about how we can do this in a way that, you know, it's not going to encourage silly behaviors that we don't want to see, including from within our own ranks. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.